Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my topic is related to a specific situation that has happened in the Serbian legal system. But in, in the beginning, let me say that there are many cases filed against the Republic of Serbia before the European Court of Human Rights uh, in the field of fundamental uh, rights in civil cases. Most of them relate to the proceedings in a uh, unreasonable period of time, and uh, that is one of the key issues in Serbian legal system. I mean, one of the most problematic issues. However, uh, I decided to focus on a specific situation that has happened in the process of so-called privatization. I believe that uh, all of you are familiar with, with the essence of this process. Still, uh, I would just in um, one sentence say that it refers to the process of um, transformation of ownership from the public one and socialist one to the private one. And uh, in that regard, uh, this process uh, lasts very long in, in Serbia and it has triggered many disputable issues. Among them, uh, the one that I have chosen to uh, analyze in my paper. So let me start with the law on privatization that has been adopted in uh, 2004 uh, with a very specific provision stating that um, actually enforcement of judgments against the subjects in privatization uh, has to be stopped. In other words, all the claims that have been uh, finally adjudged to be paid off by the subjects in, private, in privatization could not be achieved in ordinary mean. Um, this situation has lasted for more than 10 years and uh, many workers were deprived of their right to salary as, they property, as their property right. Um, in that regard, uh, the main question was the so-called proportion between general and individual interests. On one hand, the general interest was to recover these subjects, was to uh, restructure their ownership structure. And on the other hand, we had uh, thousands of workers uh, waiting for so many years to be finally paid. Uh, the state has decided to give the priority to the general interest. However, over the over a decade, it has become problematic. Uh, in that regard, a Ministry of Human Rights and Minority Rights, back in 2010, um, initiated a petition to the Supreme Court of Cassation seeking uh, an official statement regarding this situation. Supreme Court took the opposite standing in comparison to the law on privatization and said that the enforcement of judge judgments uh, should be continued. And uh, actually, we had a situation that Supreme Court derogated the law. Uh, of course, it wasn't formally possible because the Supreme Court is entitled to give the general legal reasoning and to give directions to the lower courts. However, lower courts uh, were uh, very, very uh, careful to this, to this direction of the Supreme Court. And um, in that sense, uh, this statement uh, was not uh, univocal. There was a strong dissenting opinion of a judge who said that uh, this situation was intended to be temporarily. 
and that it is intended to achieve uh, the higher interest. However, there were uh, majority who uh, who said the opposite. Uh, moreover, the Constitutional Court also took standing on this point. At first glance, in 2011, uh, the Constitutional Court dismissed the application on this matter. Uh, and then, two years after that, in 2013, the Constitutional Court, uh, by its self-initiative, took this matter and uh, decided in the same way as it was previously stated by the Supreme Court. It is important to note that, this, that the only Constitutional Court uh, is entitled to give uh, an obligatory interpretation of this matter. In other words, to put aside the provision of the law, to uh, announce it as unconstitutional. So on this point, I would like to emphasize that actually, Supreme Court uh, stepped out of its constitutional position. However, it could be said that it uh, was not in the interest of justice. Finally, the European Court of Human Rights uh, brought many judgments which are, are arisen from the same situation. In all of these cases, the European Court uh, had, uh, has concluded the same outcome and the Republic of Serbia was considered responsible for breach of the right to a fair trial and for the breach of the right to a private property. So um, in this regard also there were uh, many controversial questions and maybe the most important one was are these sub, uh, commercial subjects actually state owned companies and are their acts attributable to the state so that it could be held responsible before the European Court. And the court uh, gave uh, an interesting explanation. Even though uh, this regime uh, is uh, very specific and it is somehow hybrid one, uh, the court said that um, these subjects do not enjoy sufficient level of their uh, of, of their freedom in deciding that they are governed by the Agency for Privatization and by the National Bank of Serbia, which uh, do have a very uh, significant power in, uh, in, in, in the process of privatization and that actually uh, when doing that so-called ratione persone test or ratione persone compatibility, the court uh, was convinced that uh, this, this situation is attributable to the state. Furthermore, the Republic of Serbia was uh, found responsible for these breaches in a plenty of cases, which as a reaction uh, and as a result had a very, very uh, strong and very important observation in domestic legal order where the courts and the all uh, admin administrative subjects included in this process actually paid great attention to these judgments and that uh, eventually workers um, were not any more deprived or of their right to salary. Uh, what is also interesting is that the European Court in the judgment of Kachapor and others versus Serbia stated that uh, this whole situation 
is actually a relic of former Yugoslav brand of communism and the self-management, which I do believe that all of you are familiar with uh, in, in general. And uh, in these judgments, there are uh, very uh, good explanations and elaborations of the complete evolution of these institutes and their uh, reflections of in, in, in the present moment. So uh, I decided to do the research on this topic because I believe that it is very specific ones. It actually combines uh, issues of public law, of commercial law and the civil cases where uh, we have uh, adjudged and we have uh, uh, fully legal claims on behalf of workers who were deprived of possibility to inform judgments in civil law cases. Finally, this situation has been overcome and uh, uh, as a conclusion, I would say that this is a good example of uh, the impact that the European Court of Human Rights can produce on domestic legal systems in the aim of protection of human rights. Uh, thank you for your attention.